speaker. Uh, Paul Tranny is a principal evangelist uh, at Adobe. Um, Paul has 25 years of experience in the design industry. He brings a really, really deep uh, and very useful knowledge of uh, design tools, as well as some random knowledge of 80s pop culture. So please give a very warm welcome to Paul Tranny. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, yeah, this is going to be good. I'm so happy everybody's joining me. Again, generative art, when we talk about new tools and techniques, sort of everything that really to empower you as a creative. And again, I've been doing this for a long time in various aspects. This, you know, I think with generative art and these um, sort of generative AI tools are game changer, probably the biggest thing I've seen in 25 years. So this makes it fun for me. I'm glad everybody's here and at the cutting edge of this sort of generative AI and, uh, art sort of, I don't know, revolution, evolution. It's just, it's just crazy how fast things are moving. Uh, and I'm sure you know, and that's why you're here. And on top of that, like you have all of these tools that can do some generative art and uh, that's what I want to focus on as a visual designer, creating content, you know, background in graphic design and motion and all that fun stuff, you know, from my our, my perspective, hopefully it's yours as well. So there's tools out there. Of course, Photoshop's been around a while. You know, I work for Adobe, so probably going to be some Photoshop here. So it shouldn't be a surprise. But new tools like Adobe Firefly, which we'll get into, ChatGPT. This is just the long list, mid-journey. But when it comes to generating art, there's a multitude of tools but really, there's about kind of, I would say, around four for when it comes to generating art. Uh, below that, so down here, we also have a sort of runway ML for creating some video, which I'm a doer. I want to actually do a lot of this stuff and show you uh, it actually working and everything. Um, you know, Wonder Dynamics, Dynamics, we have Stable Diffusion, of course, creating visuals. 11 Labs, text-to-speech. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but you just record a little chunk of your voice. I forget, like it's like 15 seconds, could be a little bit more. The longer, the better. You upload to 11 labs and then you could write any script that you want. So if I'm doing a video on the road, it, they already have a sample of my voice. And then I can just write out the script and then it will give me that voiceover audio. Um, and I don't need to carry all this audio equipment with me. So uh th this is kind of what's in my toolbox of course i have it narrowed down to sort of my favorites right in here I'm probably familiar with these again firefly uh, dolly which is from open ai and i try to categorize everything so i think it would be helpful to know sort of how, how does one which one is your preference right mid journey is super popular and has really come a long way it's kind of tricky with mid journey because you have to write a prompt you're using discord and definitely prompt heavy you know um stable diffusion you know it's kind of this to set up can be kind of tricky um but it is pretty powerful so it's all like almost like the more technical you are the more you can take advantage of these tools especially when it comes to stable diffusion um the thing that's important for me it's like this part which i wish i could zoom in on like where does this data set come from? Did the company just sort of, I hate to say it, just like take all the images on the internet as their data set to generate your image? So ethically, I think um, it's important to kind of take that into consideration. Um, uh, but yeah, so I think at Adobe with Firefly, we try to be as clear as possible with all of that. So anyways, that's just a slide. Feel free. This is being recorded. You can reference this later on. I'm going to move on because I want to talk about like Firefly. So easy to use, right? It's our new family of generative tools. I, I'm not looking at chat right now, but I would typically ask like, you know, who, who's tried it out? What is your experience? Uh, that sort of thing. So I'd love to get your feedback. But it is trained on Adobe Stock Images, openly licensed content, and public domain content where the content uh, copyright has expired. So you know, uh, you know, again, you you you're ordering something from a restaurant. You you know where all the all the ingredients were sourced, which you know makes me feel good uh, knowing that they're not taking art from an artist friend of mine and uh, using it as this sort of it. Why do we do that to make it commercially safe? Third bullet point, huge, right? So we're using Adobe Stock. We need to build a, out a compensation model for everybody who's contributing to Adobe Stock. You know, so you're contributing to what ultimately makes Firefly. How can you be compensated uh, since we are using those photos? And that's kind of the holdup and why we're currently like in beta is building that out. 
Um, but again, you could also choose to do not train if you are uploading to Adobe stock. But the exciting thing is sort of seeing the stuff integrated into that. Oh, that's enough of slides. You know, I have a couple more, but I'm just going to dive into this because I think it's just, it's it's most interesting just to to view this, you know, content. Um, yeah, right in here. So it's already playing around with it. But you can go to firefly.adobe.com. Um, ooh, <laughs> uh, and. Yeah, so, and I'm also reading comments. I'll try to keep tabs on those because I do want to keep this interactive. I will point out, yeah, Midjourney's quality is pretty pretty darn good because they're pulling, of course, from that uh, that huge data set. But the data set uh, Adobe's pulling from with Adobe Stock having professional grade photos is like a huge plus. But let's just jump in there. You get sort of all these things. So text to image, that's all you think of. I think in Midjourney, it's like text to image, right? Does it have generative fill? Well, Dolly has some of that in a, in a very limited way. And then text effects, which actually I think is unique to uh, Firefly, which I can get into. We're going to recolor. Like there's so many things we're working on internally that are insane. Like this 3D to image. Hopefully that's zooming in. That's going to be crazy when it comes out and I'm excited about it. So um, anyways, text to image, you jump in there. I think everybody's probably pretty savvy in this case, right? So if I wanted to try any one of these prompts, um, hot air balloon with full of flowers, I would change the, uh, uh, let's read this prompt first off. Hot air balloon full of flowers and butterflies around orange sky on a background, happy birthday basket balloons, right? So that's this prompt. And um, what I'd wanna do is happy hot air balloon made of flowers. So I'm just modifying this and butterflies. Um, and then I'm just gonna click generate. But this is kind of the nice parts. Like I could be as general or specific as I want here. And then I think, uh, you know, an awesome power of Firefly is off to the side. And by the way, this already looks more along the lines, at least what I would want, right? We can see sort of these lovely, this balloon made of flowers and butterflies. Um, again, I wanted more flowers and butterflies, and that's kind of what I'm getting. But these are the results we get, right? We see all of them. Um, and I can start to sort of identify which one I want and start to riff on that and mix it up as well. So... Um, using the, keeping this one, I can iterate three more. So, but the fact that you even just have this interface to say, Hey, Oh, I like this one. Keep this one, generate the others, maybe favorite this one. Oh, but I like this one now. Right. So you can start to narrow down what you want. And again, off to the side, you can see, Oh, here's a situation where I can start to refine this more. So I don't need to remember all these prompts and like take, you know, be a prompt engineer. Sure, I want to know how all that stuff works, but I don't have to, you know, say know the camera type and things like that. Or if I want to change the composition right down here, we'll do wide angle, right? And we'll do a hot, a hot air balloon made of uh, bolts and chrome and uh, gears, right? The opposite of something that can float, you know, around an orange sky. So just changing it, and actually why I change it, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to like steampunk vaporwave, going the exact opposite direction. But the fact that I don't have to, you know, sort of keep keep in mind of like the, the different prompts or have that, I have an Evernote by the way, that I keep all my prompts in. It's usually a lot of copying and pasting for me, but uh, obviously you can see what, what you get here. And again, I could be as specific as a possible. So this one's not bad, by the way. So, so we can jump into this further, right? We can go into generative fill because I'm thinking, oh, this is cool, but I would like to have maybe paint some more gears in here. So jumping in, kind of painting in this area, right? I can add uh, gears and metal and chrome, like more, more chrome. You can never have C-H-R-O-N-E, right? Painted in that spot. But what am I doing? I'm painting in the browser. So as a designer, like, is this is really the way I want to work? I probably want to sort of work on my desktop in, you know, something like Photoshop. So this is what it brings in. It actually samples from the area. My prompt was pretty close to what I currently have. Sort of it is, do I really want to paint this way anyways, right? From there, I can download this image and, uh, and run with it. So again, I was just kind of having some fun. You uh, hopefully kind of get the gist. Let's run something else. Uh, let's do like 
surreal, psychedelic, colorful animal, and we'll click generate. While that's happening, we'll take a look at sort of what's downloaded. We can go into our downloads folder, sort of there's this image, and there's a couple other things that I've generated as well. You know, here's, you know, a cat, for instance. Um, when things get downloaded, they have um, uh, content credentials attached to them. And that's what happens anytime you sort of have an image. And I love this. Come on now. I just think stuff's so cool, right? Anytime you download something, you know, these are the content credentials. So the idea is just like being transparent with how things are created. So that gets attached. And, you know, if you ever want to verify it, you can go to verify dot content authenticity.com. So the idea is like, this is not an Adobe thing. It's a consortium. If that's, I'm saying that correctly, because it sounds weird. Consortium. <laughs> Basically, it's a bunch of companies that want to get involved, like the Twitters of the world or the X's of the uh, of the world involved, to just basically flag things when uh, things are generated with uh, AI, right? So we just again, once transparency. Here's this. We drop it in here. You can see this is made with, um, you know, Adobe Firefly 1.0. Same thing for this image. As I open it, right, I can start to modify it um, and go from there. But here. Here's the image here. It says it's made with Adobe Firefly 1.0. Um, and uh, so, so the, I, let's, I want to, I want to, I can take this to a whole other level. Let me take it to the whole, because I think everybody here is pretty intelligent. I, I believe that hundred percent. This is like the smartest crew on the web. So let me take this JPEG. So we, we did a basic JPEG. Nah, not that exciting. Here's a JPEG that I made, which is crazy that I'm going to drop in here. As that's happening, I'm going to open up Photoshop and we'll go to this file. So this is the file that I made and I've turned on content credentials. So we could see right in here, uh, if you give me a second, content credentials, beta, right? This lists out sort of everything that was done to this file roughly and the assets used. So the metadata is already kind of baked in here. All these individual elements, if I click on them, let's click on this one, for instance. Like this happens to be uh, a Firefly image that I generated. And, um, you know, the content credentials is attached to that. So I just did some crazy stuff. I attached content credentials to it. I saved out the JPEG. And... Um, what uh, gets attached to it is is all that metadata. So, you know, you're able to kind of peel back for this file. We can say choose comparison. So it says it's made by me. I've attached my social media. People don't steal it, right? Here's all my stuff. Here's all the assets that were used to kind of create it. And then we can even choose comparisons if you wanted to see what the first version looked like it was kind of back here. So here's kind of where I started. I added the arms and all that stuff. And then it ended up looking like this. So, you know, with this file, you can see what I created with AI and what was created from photos and stuff. So, again, I think that's pretty cool. By the way, you, if you're thinking, again, I think you guys are smart, you're like, oh, let's rip the uh, metadata out of it. Well, right over here, we'll give it a second to load, but it's going to have content credentials off to the side where I can upload that content to the cloud. So if anybody steals my image and tries to claim it as theirs, it's going to be like, whoa, that's Paul's. And here's all the metadata stored in the cloud um, uh, for that particular uh, image. So that's right over here. Uh, publish content credentials to the cloud. So again, that metadata is in cloud, gets referenced to this image, and that's where you do a comparison. I actually haven't done that yet, but right, it'll be a button right up here. So anyways, enough about content credentials. Let's move on, because we're still having fun with this, by the way. Like we've just downloaded this sort of crazy image right, which is super cool. Um, like I have this one, there's a number of images that I have that I can start to play with, right? Even this one right here. So let's even open up this one just, just for fun. Um, and I wanna show you this real fast. Let's, let's first off kind of compare, um, you know, currently you have a content aware fill. So we'll just do a content aware fill right here. You guessed it, I did actually remove that using content aware fill as my example of showing you how content aware fill works. It is an okay job. Um, when it comes to, um, you know, sort of extending this image, 
right? We might want to extend this out. And then to build out this futuristic environment, I'm going to do a lot of copying and pasting, you know, of these pixels and stretching it out and just rubber stamping, if you will, um, for, for this particular sliver right here. Uh, I would take this, I would do a transform. This is what I would try to do back in the days. I'd try to stretch things and grab photos from other places. But what we have available today is um, the ability to use generative fills. We'll invert this. This is my selection, which is the area around it. And right down here at the bottom, we'll do a generative fill, right? And we'll click generate. So I didn't give it anything. I just said, hey, figure it out. Figure it out, Photoshop. You just have this image do what you can, build this futuristic uh, forest. And there's our futuristic forest. Right, so we'll take a look. There it is. Cool. In fact, we have multiple versions, right? Some are better than others. I like what's happening even like with, I like this first one. I'd like the first one the best, but you get these variations. It's all built in Photoshop too. Now guys, get this. Justina, Steve, Andrew, everyone, Sean, Dan, this is brand spanking new as of maybe an hour and a half ago, roughly two hours ago. Because uh, what did I have to do? I had to do that in two moves. So let's delete that. Let's actually roll all of this back where we started. It was like clear back here. And we'll select the crop tool. We want to extend it out like before, right? But we have right up here at the top. And I'm going to try to zoom in on this. I don't know if uh, it's zooming in or not. Oh, okay, thank you. So just to thank you so much, Matthew. So just to point that out right up at the top, we have this fill. So when you extend the canvas, uh, it, we used to have content aware, we still have content aware fill, but here's your generative expand. So just have that selected. I've extended the canvas and I just like hit enter. So just to recap, crop tool, extend it out, make sure that box ch is checked, fill it in with the magic. Photoshop, i.e. Firefly. And this is what we get sort of within one move and within my tools, like I'm all about it. Like, ah, oh, man, come on now. It's like so cool. So again, we just added this or launched it this morning, uh, like two hours ago, eight, uh, yeah, an hour and 50 minutes ago. You guys have access to this as well. So everything I'm doing, if you go into beta apps, it's this Photoshop beta. So generative fill is in Photoshop beta. This uh, generative expand is also in the Photoshop beta that you could try out today. But I think this is just like a hint of, of what you could do in Photoshop. Like just use this generative technology when you want. Yes, you have to wait for a progress bar, but considering what it made, that's crazy. And I know we always do these fun, oh, surreal. I do it all the time. I love surreal stuff. But this will work with like any photo. Like we'll extend to this, right? A situation where oh, I got to build out this copy, um, you know, for this particular photo. So we need some, you know, body copy on, on one side and we need to add a title in, which means extending this image, which means doing a lot of copy and pasting, right? Boom. I did it so fast. You're probably wondering what I did. I hardly know what I did. It doesn't matter. It did it. <laughs> but all I did is really is just have this checked by uh, by default. And it built this out. Look at that. Oh, we built out this whole trail. And just to remind everyone, this is the original, was this size. It wasn't masked or anything. And it created this whole area. Let's do you one better, by the way, as we zoom in. Situation where like, okay, we didn't, uh, we didn't, we maybe maybe it's a, an image of somebody and maybe you didn't get sort of a, a release from them to use their image, even though you can't see this lady's face. Um, or back to the situation of, I want to put some copy in here and just need to remove her. She's a little distracting, right? So what do we do? We'll do generative fill right in here. Down here at the bottom, I'm just using generative fill. And this is the new context bar, contextual bar, where I can type in whatever I want. But this time I'm just going to click generate. So anytime you leave that blank, it's just going to fill it in with the surroundings. Uh, Lisa, what's up? Good to see you. Um, yeah, Steve, exactly. This magic is real. I, I think it's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, there it is. So what did it do? Like it removed her, but look at the original. This lady right here, I could still see a piece of her and it filled, filled that in. Let's turn this on. It completed her as an, an individual, right? 
it filled that part in. So there's different versions. In this version, it didn't give her a backpack. There's this version, it's just a little bit different. But the fact that it augments this image like that just like kind of blows my mind. So I can go on and on with all this, right? We could start adding things. Let's jump in here. These kids are baking. I'll do just two quick things. Generative fill, we'll type in cake, right? We'll see what we get. Let's see if these kids can actually bake or if they're making just a mess, right? So I did just your selection tool. And that's the powerful thing about uh, Photoshop. Like I have this exactness of being able to create these selections that I want. And it will fill in that selection with whatever you want. I just did a regular marquee. Sure enough, they could bake a nice chocolate cake in this case. And it puts the flakes in front of the cake as well, like the the uh, the, the um, flour that uh, you know it, they're messing with. But I have three different versions to choose from. It does an amazing job. I just encourage you guys, like again, game changer. We'll jump in. Maybe we'll select. Let's just like we'll see what happens, huh? Shall we see what happens? spoon <laughs> typically hands are very difficult as as you might have experienced i just typed in spoon because hey how did she make this they just using their bare grubby hands to make this cake um and we'll see what happens boom like look it just put her hand put that spoon in her hand the color is a little off but look at that like three versions oh like look at this version it's a little bent She's kind of like the Hulk where she's able, she's like crushing that metal almost. But look, correct number of fingers. It just blows my mind. I'm like, come on now. This is crazy. But that's where we're at today is like anything you want to create. All those, and, and from here, by the way, I would kind of tighten this up. I can go through a thousand examples, sort of drawing right in here, I do a degenerative fill, apple, right? I could do this all day long. Maybe, it, maybe the hand will grab an apple. We'll see what happens. But this usually happens pretty quick. Yeah, so I think, so Christine mentions the impressive hands for sure. Like, look, first of all, that's a huge apple. Why is it a huge apple? I drew a large selection area. So I should have done something in proportion to the hand. So that's kind of my fault. But look at the size of that apple. Most importantly, it uses those fingers and starts to wrap it around the hand as I, I would expect. Look at the size of that apple. Can we just laugh? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Again, it was my selection that made it so big. Um, and I would probably won't be more exact next time. So I encourage you to try this like out today. Like I've, I'm running out of time already. I've done extending with, um, you know, with this image too. Like it'll start repeating that pattern. This is a case where like, you know, easily you want to jump in and, you know, sort of change your clothes. Here's the selection, by the way. Let's click on that. Here's a selection and I'll, I'll turn this off. This is my original. And then I just started going through different versions. Now, each time it makes something that you use generative fill, it makes this generative layer. Why is it not titled the prompt? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Because we could run the, we could change the prompt as many times as we want. I started with um, camouflage, right? So it says right up here, camouflage. And then I said, hey, give me a black tie suit. So I'm changing, my initial selection stays the same, but I'm changing the prompt all on this one layer. Black tie suit, ooh, that looks good. You know, let's let's make me a doctor. All right, let's put this on my, on my Tinder profile. Not that I'm on Tinder, but like, hey, I'm a doctor. No, you're not. You have generative fill. Get over your bad self. Chef, on down the line. Tattoo artist, right? That's what I look like. Yeah, that looks about right with that neckline, right? That's ridiculous. And then I was decided to get fancy. So like, here's, you know, the dress version, gold queen with diamond necklace. And uh, yeah, must, must have been cold out this, that day. <laughs> but I encourage you to like have fun with this practical to ridiculous sort of flexibility here. Let's, I feel like I need to move on because there's, a, I only have like five minutes. So you get, and again, we can do this all day long. You will literally just like with any AI technology, you'll just start like doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff, removing people. Boom. Let's extend the canvas. Boom. Uh, let's, uh, you know, let's do something fun here with this. Oh, let's see how it just interacts with this scene. We'll do reflective lake with uh, ripples. Typing that in, seeing what happens here, right? Just running through this super, just super quick. Because what would I normally have to do? I'm, what, try to find a lake image? 
um, duplicate the top part, flip it down below, use liquify to like make it look like water or use the, the um, there's a filter effect. But look what it did here. Look at that. Here's, here's where it does the water, right? So that did not exist before. So before, after, and then we have our different versions that we'll click through right now. Boom. Ooh, that's nice. Right. Super cool. I like the second one. I think you guys get the idea. Let's move on. So have fun with that. Go go nuts. Um, and then explore Firefly. I talked like a lot about it. I didn't even get into because I, okay, so tr honestly, like try some new things because I've um, also, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, my other favorite tool that's not an Adobe tool is Runway ML. So Runway ML allows me to kind of like honestly animate, um, you know, my content. So I'll take this. I'm sorry. It looks like I got kicked me out. But uh, this does a lot of AI for video, right? So I'll jump in here and I'll do a text or image to video. So I would take what I have created, by the way. So back in Firefly, what was just downloaded, you know, taking this image, putting in here, you know, a uh, uh, cat running through the woods. We don't have time to process this. It's just going to take a second. So that's why I'm going to switch over to this version. This is the version where I gave it an image, which is right down here at the bottom. And I'm sorry, it's hard to see. And this is what Runway ML turned out. Because so I said, hey, move the creature's head to the left and the right and have it smile. And look, I just brought the still image to life using Runway ML. I have so much fun with it. All those slides that you saw a second ago as I switch back to my slides, you know, all of <clears throat> this content that you're seeing, this morphing, that's all done with um, uh, Firefly and Runway ML. But it's crazy. You want to take advantage of this some more. I already talked about content credentials. Is uh, check it out not only in Photoshop, we have Illustrator as like generative recolor. And in Adobe Express, the beta, that's where you could take advantage of um, a, a lot of these, this Firefly technology integrated into a tool as well. Just FYI. Don't have time to show that. What's next? I think we're going to be tackling video. Again, don't really have time to, to show this, but, you know, using AI for video, taking things to the next level. But that's that's for another time as I kind of wind down. Hopefully that's inspiring you, is inspiring you, because I'm like, all this technology, like, leads to opportunity. And I want to be an early adopter rather than, it's like, I'm going to have to learn and know this stuff sooner or later. And I'd rather it be sooner so I can be considered like a leader in the space rather than having to pay, play catch up. And that's what everybody's doing here. First of all, nobody's expert. There are no experts out there. Like, because the technology is so darn new, right? Nobody's going to have 20 years experience. Like there, there actually are people that have like eight years experience in this AI space and they are the gods. But uh, the short of it is like, have fun with this technology that I've shown you and get curious about it and like create cool stuff is the goal, right? That's all I want to do. Grab eyeballs is my job as a designer. Uh, we bring my stuff to life with animation. Uh, it's so much fun. I hope you guys are excited about the future. I'm getting all amped up and it's like only 9 a.m. here on Pacific time. So that looks like that's my time. Thank you so much. I'll keep an eye on chat and uh, thank you everyone. I, I am literally speechless. I've Ooh. rendered, I have to like pick my jaw up off the floor <laughs> as I think everybody in the chat is probably doing the same. When the creature started moving its mouth, I think. Yeah. Uh, mm. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. Amazing. That's, yeah, that's, that's Runway ML. Believe me, we're working on that stuff earlier. I, I'm happy to talk about anything whilst even internally while keeping my day job. So that's the goal is let you know what's coming while not revealing full things that I would get in trouble for. Perfect. So, so listen, we have some questions. We have a lot of questions actually um, in the, in the chat, we have some like huge questions and then some specific ones. So I'll, I'll maybe try to go through some of the really specific ones. This is a great question um, uh, from Troy uh, Troy is asking, are there any products that can be given brand standards, you know, a brand guideline, uh, uh, some brand standards and generate assets based on those standards? Ooh, I love it. What yeah. a 
what what next level thinking um so i mean not that i'm aware of no but add that to the wish list like seriously because i want to again we're working on some stuff internally that's like around sort of design but using using these assets these fonts these logos these colors um, yeah. So we're working on stuff. Let's talk in a year because currently I don't know of anything. Feel free to chime in, um, you know, and then the whole thought of like what we are working on for enterprise, by the way, is like at least giving a data set like you're the Nikes right. of the world. Hey, you have your data set. Generate things based on your your data set, your shoes mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. In a year. I feel like we'll check back in two weeks. <laughs> I know it's, you it's, think you have a year. I, yeah. I feel like years have passed each month. <laughs> Totally, totally. It's crazy just to even think about, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure it was only maybe a year ago that I first, maybe two years ago, first started trying Dolly and uh, maybe even just a year ago or less of, of trying mid journey. And it just, it feels like we're, we're, we are living in exponential times. There's absolutely no question about yeah. that. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Um, very specific question from Leslie, uh, but a good one, I think. Is there any pixel degradation um, to to be concerned about? Like, what's how does how yeah. does it the the uh, generated yep. uh, imagery and background stand up? Yeah, great, great question. So, pixel degradation, basically, like what 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 I so it returns about a thousand by a thousand square image anytime I like make something. So when I extended those images, it's doing roughly that. So if you're working in Photoshop in a high DPI, 300 DPI image, since it's only returning that smaller square, I would do that background scene almost in chunks, like left, right, top, bottom. Right. Um, but know that we are actively working on, and that's the number one question we get. If I went to the Discord, that would be the top requested feature of give me a high res version of this prompt it'll you'll have to wait longer but like rerun it high res sort of button is what i like up high up res sort of thing right right uh just point out in the chat uh dre has posted uh that uh, someone has made an ai brand design tool so it, it's uh, like these things are obviously these um uh productivity yeah. gains incredible productivity gains um yeah are oh, dre, really, that's awesome yeah Oh. Um, uh, another, uh, again, kind of a specific question, but I think a really good one when we think about credentialing, copyright, ownership, things like that. So, uh, Kirsten is asking the credentialing is great for directly created images. Is there any detection possible when you've pasted AI generated pixels into your own document? How do you make sure that the credentials travel along into your, uh, Photoshop a document and then into an exported uh, image. Like how how does that metadata? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, when and yeah. where does it become attached? Yeah, I mean it gets attached at the beginning. You you could probably like hack it and like strip it out. If I do a copy and paste in in Photoshop, and I haven't done this in a while, I open up a Firefly image. I just do a select all, copy, paste. I've seen it bring the metadata with it, but. I'm not, I'm sure we don't have all that worked out to where you could just, you know, it's just not, you, know, you first off, you have to turn it on too for your image. So you have to proactively, you know, have that data, uh, metadata attached to mm. it. But to your point, like anybody could probably steal something. They could maybe do a screenshot, things like that. Mm. For me as a designer, I'm just, I want to prove that I made a thing and other people can not prove that they did make the thing. Yeah, because they just have a JPEG and not all the layers like I have. Um, here, here's a, a great question that I think m probably a lot of us are kind of curious about um, uh, from Laylee. Why can AI not create fingers and faces? Why? why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why so why the struggle I, specifically the, there? The general thought is like most images out there of people's hands, they're holding something. So AI has a hard time distinguishing what's the object and what are fingers. So that's the general thought why it's so mm. difficult. The hands are always holding something and it's hard to decipher so many different objects. But we, you know, that's no longer a joke. We used to always joke about, oh, look at those six fingers. No, that's like not the case anymore. So um, wh whatever AI can't do today, it can probably do tomorrow. And I probably literally mean tomorrow. 
Apparently, there's an AI to design branding tool that's out there already. <laughs> Thanks to <Wow>. Dre. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a question from Katie. Uh, how do you think that this could affect the the film animation industry? Yeah. Uh, well, especially animation. I hope yeah. animators are using these tools. It's doing sort of the, you know, again, doing the in-between frames, things like that. So they should be, I want them promoted to art director to where they're making the key art and then the AI is building out the animation because it understands a white a walk cycle. That's my hope there. It's going to hopefully make that those jobs easier for them. I hope it leads to more creative projects, just the amount of projects that get generated. Um, but yes, it will do some of their job for them the same way Photoshop does more of my job for me. And I just get to make the decisions is my hope for them. Um, this is a kind of a bigger, a bigger question. Uh, what is your biggest concern with um, AI generated art? You know, I honestly, I think, well, AI generated art, um, you know, honestly, like people not being transparent about what they're doing and what they're not doing. And I think it's easy to, you think it's easy to spot AI. Everybody's like, oh yeah, I can totally spot AI. No, you can't. Like, we're going to get to the point where you can't tell. And I'm sorry. And that's where I'm like, my biggest problem is like the transparency of the person admitting, create, you know, saying what they created and didn't create. And I think for artists, my stuff getting stolen. I spent so much time on creating this whole portfolio and now somebody can generate a prompt based on my portfolio. I'm like, that's kind of messed up. So that's, those are my concerns probably echoed with other artists as well. Yeah, this is, I, I have a question uh, just because I uh, have been doing um, a fair bit of work in inclusive design and uh, sometimes, you know, representation, inclusive representation can be really difficult because there's just not a lot out there in terms of, mm. Uh, stock photography and uh, a lot of the imagery that is out there online is is somewhat biased. Oh, um, yeah. And I, yeah, I'm just wondering how we might deal with that if if we're drawing only on sort of yeah. the stock shots that are out there. Are there any ways that we can help the AI to uh, dig into some maybe non-traditional sources? Yes, I love it. So great question. So we are actively like working on, we are keenly aware within Adobe to know when you type in doctor, do you get like a white male? We are so aware of that. And, yeah. and we'll, we'll put, we, we are, we try to be as diverse as possible to your point. Where are the, you know, if I want uh, doctors of different ethnicities and, and, uh, and everything. So, so this is an opportunity for people, Adobe stock contributor to start uploading that data. Cause we're yeah. trying to make it diverse and we need that source footage. And guess what? We're going to, you know, um, compensate you for that. So I would upload a lot of diverse content Amazing. to Adobe stock is the, is the short answer. I think that's a really, really important, uh, call to action. We're all like, if this stuff is biased and stuff, like, let us know. That's where we had, you know, this is in beta flag it. Like, oh, this is messed up that this is this way. Like, we need to know about that stuff because we're trying to not make it that way. Hopefully everybody is. Yeah. Um, another very kind of a big question. Um, and you you touched on it already, but what can we expect from from AI and, and from Firefly in one year and then in five years where yeah, where five. is this all going to be uh, you know uh, that's a great question <laughs> the answer is i don't know i know i know everything w w adobe is all about making tools easy and tools for designers so i think it's going to make your job easier and it's going to make things that you want to do even even easier like that possible like me being a, a designer like oh i'm just working on a still image well does that have to be the case how can we you know, sort of take that to the next level with like animation or like, can I make a design and upload it? And then all of a sudden a, a, an easy animate button and it builds this animation sort of thing. So I'm looking at those new opportunities to get out of a still image, um, you know, things like that as well. New opportunities for designers. And I don't, I don't know the answer. I know we're actively working on video. We're actively working on like a ton of things. So just watch my social media, watch Adobe social media, Literally, we launched the, you know, Generative Expand this morning. So that's the rate at which things are kind of moving. Yeah, this is, a, again, a very kind of a specific question. But in terms of the animation that you showed us, is it possible to kind of uh, uh, pull that out as um, a series of stills? I'm thinking about game design and sprite sheets and, mm. and generating other kinds of creative assets that might need to be taken yeah. into another 
format um, to be included in something like a game. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Like you, you end up with a video that you can start right. to grab the frames from. By the way, so they do have a tool like if you do draw some of the keyframes, it'll do the morphing in between. So it will understand the movement. The leg is in a different position and it will make those in between frames. So the Unrunway ML can string sort of those key art images together. Just FYI, if that if that helps. You kind of want the reverse of that, but, you know, just a feature you could try. Interesting. Yeah. Um, big question. How do you see AI shaping careers? Do you think it's um, just going to be used as a tool and sort of already established roles? Or do you see kind of new jobs, new uh, those those jobs that haven't been invented yet? Um, yeah, we're I mean, always that's... talking about what 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 do you see? That, that's the goal. Like, I mean, any company is probably looking at somebody who could, you know, like just, yeah. So, so the answer is, I don't, I, I think people aren't going to lose their jobs to AI. They will lose their job potentially to a, a another designer that knows AI and isn't mm -hmm. taking, is taking advantage of AI. So that's what I think that, you know, so the more skilled worker over the one that just is, is maybe not embracing it. But I also think it's fascinating that it's directly impacting you know, data, data scientist, like uh, the, the, uh, dare I say, like white collar workers. It's like, we were at a restaurant last night. Who is not affected? Who care less about this? The chef. This is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Those jobs are, pretty, uh, you know, if it comes to worse, I'm either going to be a chef or electrician. <laughs> right. So right. It, won't, so, it, won't get, it won't get to that. It's like, it's not like we're going to not need more graphics. Like, you know, right. the amount of content we're producing these days, I need help from AI. And that's, mm -hmm. that's my goal. Have it help me. Yeah. Um, this that might be too new to really answer this question, but um, this is from Vimbai. What what are some of the ways that you've seen design professionals in in various industries, but even within Adobe, like already making use of Firefly in their day to day? Yeah, um, so it's currently not available for for uh, for uh, commercial use, but a lot of people, and I go to a lot of agencies, so they'll be using Firefly for concepting. They'll use Mid Journey. They're everybody's doing it for concepting, for pitching yeah. clients on work for videos and stuff. That's why the Firefly for video there is a little clip that shows you know sort of taking a script and then it will start producing all of the. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like the 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 the, the sketches, if you will, or the art for it. Because what's a script but like a bunch of prompts? So we're we're working on that internally. I don't know where that stuff is at, but people are using it for concepting internally, and everybody's using generative fill. At least the people that know about it are using it. So yeah, yeah. I, I can really see it being useful for, as you say, for concepting, for prototyping, um, yeah. for presentations, for um Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying trying to generate a like a, a wide divergence of assets to hopefully come come down to the to the best choice in the end. Yeah, and it, like I've I see how it affects you as a designer. Is it uh, like I feel like it's challenging and hopefully has made my work better because I could one take advantage of it, but I could just churn out little things that can make my collages and stuff that much cooler by using all of this AI for these parts, and then I'm just like the art director. Put this leaf there, that flower there, that spill there, yeah. or whatever. So, um, we're we're basically at the at the end. I I do want to ask you one more question. It's a question mm -hmm. from Vanessa. There's so many tools out there, AI tools. It does get pretty overwhelming. A lot of them kind of do the same thing. And in, in a Venn diagram, there's a lot of overlap. How do you really separate the the wheat from the chaff? Yeah, uh, look at your your ethics. Do you like the ethics of the company of of, right. of like how they're creating that? Because and then also you want to look at the quality. So that's what I think of. So I'm like, oh, I like Mid Journey, but I don't know if I feel comfortable the fact that I could type in a friend's name and get their artwork. I'm like, eh. So um, so look at the quality of the work and then the ethics of how it's produced are the two things that for anything and go go with your your heart and and you know, be comfortable with uh, and happy with what you create, however it's created. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think the ethics, the background, the company, it it matters. Yeah. I mean, Adobe is yeah. full of a bunch of artists that get upset at things like AI, like, you know, the, in the situations that I just described. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. We're out of time for our Q&A. Uh, thank you for all of the, the questions that came in. There was a lot of questions or some we didn't get to. I, I'm sorry about that. But thank you so much, Paul. That was 
jaw jaw dropping really amazing oh, cool yeah well thank you thank you christine and good seeing everybody and some friendly names in chat it makes it so fun for me it's like you're all my coworkers, so this is fun and let's let's go get better together and follow me on online so thank you yeah thank you so much and everybody we're going to take uh, another uh short break